Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here at FE Made Easy. We are going to talk today about deflection of trusses. Let's get going. A truss carries a vertical load of 50 kN at mid-span as shown. The member forces, tension positive, have been calculated and are shown. All members are made of steel and have the following properties. Area 3000 mm squared, moment of inertia equals to 3 times 10 power 6 mm power 4. What is the vertical deflection at the point of loading? When it comes to deflection of trusses, I would like to go straight to the FE handbook and look out for the formula. And then we're going to be able to, to know what we have to do. So I'll go to FE handbook and just a quick search of deflection of trusses or truss deflection. Let's try that. Truss the collection. There you go. And it's going to get you here. And the formula, let me zoom in a little bit. The formula is we have sum of, we have lowercase f, which if you look here, the lowercase f, it says force in memory caused by unit load. So if you're familiar with the deflection of trusses you you would know what that is is we are going to remove the load at that point which in our case it's 50 kilonewtons and we're going to replace it with a unit load and then calculate the forces in each member caused by that by that unit load so this is what lowercase f is and then multiplied by delta l Delta L is given here, and it is equal to F, capital F in this case. Capital F is the force in each member caused by the initial load, in our case, is 50 kilonewtons. L is the length of each member, divided by A, which is the area of each member given in the problem in our case, and then E is modulus of elasticity. Now, modulus of elasticity, if you pay attention here, we it's not given to us, right? We are given the area and moment of inertia, and we don't have modulus of elasticity. And I sometimes in the problem, you are going to get that. They're not going to give it to you because you have it in the FE handbook. So that's why it's very helpful to know where things are or what you have available. And I know that it is under the mechanics of materials, I believe, at, somewhere at the end of this section. There's a table with modulus of elasticity of certain materials here. So you have uh, steel, aluminum, cast iron, and, and so many more. And you have modulus of elasticity in US units and in SE units. And in our, we're working in SE units, so in our case, it's going to be equal to 200 gigapascals, okay? So there you go. We have found all we need to know in order to solve the problem. I'm going to just write down the modulus of elasticity because in problem, it's not given to us. I'm going to say E equals to 200 giga pascals and we're going to find out later how to transform this in other units if we needed to but for now we're, i'm going to leave it in this unit giga pascals okay and in order for us to move on i'm going to just also bring the formula for the deflection of trusses so i'm going to go back if i click here it's going to get me back to the formula. So I'm going to write deflection. I'm going to also write a joint because we don't have any naming of each joint equals two and it's sum of lowercase f multiplied by capital F multiplied by L divided by A multiplied by E. Okay. 
we're going to start by calculating the forces in each member caused by the unit load. And if you are thinking about removing this 50 kilonewton load and replacing it with a unit load and calculating the force in each member, this is kind of time consuming and most likely you are not going to do that on the exam. We are given capital F, so which is the force in each member caused by this 50 kilonewton force. If we are to remove this 50 kilonewtons load and add a unit load, we are going to be able to calculate the forces in this truss by scaling. What I mean is the force in this member, for example, is going to be equal to 49.3 divided by 50. 49.3, 50 divided. So the force in this member caused by unit load, it's going to be equal to 49.3 divided by 50, and this is 0 0.986. Then let's take 4167, for example, here, 4167, 50 divided. And this is the force in this member caused by the unit load. And this is the way you calculate 3, 4. This is the way you calculate the uh, force in each member caused by the unit load. So I'm going to say here, it's going to be equal to force in each member divided by, by the load, which in our case is 50 kilonewtons. And this is how you calculate lowercase f. And I just made it a little bit simpler, and I already done this. But you can stop this video, and I will encourage you to do that and find this out on your own, and then check with what I have got. So I brought them here and I have that all of the division. And of course, it's very important. You have to carry the signs. Negative means this is in compression. Positive means the, the member is in tension. And we also have to carry the signs when we talk about unit load. Perfect. So we have now capital F and lowercase f. So we should be able to calculate the deflection at that joint. So deflection at the joint. I'm going to write the formula one more time. We have sum of lowercase f multiplied by capital F multiplied by L divided by A E. In order to do this, I'm going to start with calculating this upper member. And upper member go f l i equals 2 and we have to pay attention because we have here quite a few members i'm pretty sure the exam you're not going to give in all of these members you're probably going to get a truss smaller truss for just a few members but here we have a bigger one so we get better training okay so I'm going to start with this two member at the top, and I'm going to go down from there. So the way it is here, we have the sum of forces. I have two forces that are the same. So I'm going to say two multiplied by, and I can actually inverse this. I'm going to start with capital F. This is multiplication, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to start with capital F because I have them in this order here. So it is two times 41, 67, okay? And then multiplied with lowercase f of these members, which is minus 0 0.833, and multiplied by L, which is the length of the member in this case is five feet. I'm going to leave out the units just to make it simple. Plus, perfect, plus. And now we move forward. We're going to go 
let's say to these diagonals, I have right these diagonals one, two, three, four of them. So I'm going to do four multiplied by, and I'm going to get the value of these fours, 49. And it's very important to carry the sign over. So we have minus 49.3, and then multiply by the value of the force of this member made by the unit load. Okay, and we have minus 0 0.986 and multiplied by the length. And the length, in this case, we have a right triangle. This side is five, this is three. So we can use Pythagorean theorem. We're gonna have five squared plus three squared. Square root of that. And this value is going to be 583 meters. Double check me on that. So this is going to be multiplied by 583 and plus. plus. Next, we are going to move on to 25 kilonewton force. And I have two of them. So I'm going to continue with 2 multiplied by, and it's positive, so we have 25 multiplied by, and then the value of F, lowercase f, is 0, 5, and multiplied by the length, which is 3 meters, plus. Then we have this 50 kilonewton force. It is 1. You can say 1 multiplied by 50 multiplied by lowercase f is 1 and multiplied by the length of the member, which is 3. And you know, I'm noticing here that at the lowercase f is the force in each member caused by the unit load, and the unit load is unitless. So these are actually, they don't have any units here. So I'm going to take that out. It's a unit less. I just carry them over. But that's right. I'm just going to cross them over like that. Oh, one more here. Okay. No units for the forces in the truss caused by the unit load. No units. All right, let's move on. We're done with the 50 kilonewton load. Now we go down to the bottom chord. We have two members multiplied by 41.67 and multiplied by 0. 833 three, and multiplied by 5 feet, the length of the member. And finally, we have the two final members, 2 multiplied by 83.33 and multiplied by 1.667 and multiplied by the length, which is 5. And we have finalized all the members. So now all we have to do is make sure we calculate this correctly and take into account the uh, signs, which in this case, if you pay attention, we have negative with negative, it's gonna give us a positive value and it's the case for every single uh, component. So in the end, they're all gonna be positive and we're gonna add them up. And once you, I'm actually, again, encouraging you to stop the video and go ahead and calculate and see what value do you get. And then come back and check yourself. Once you do all these calculations, you should get, let me write this down, a value of 3 
four or one point nine. And the units, the units we have, this is unitless, it has no units. The force is in kilonewton, and then the length is in meters. So the units here are kilonewton meter. Perfect. So now we're going to come back to the initial formula and substitute. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start by, I'm going to delete this from here. And so I'm going to say delta joint equals two. Now the upper term is three four four one point nine kilonewtons meters, and the bottom term we have the area, and the way area was given to us in the problem as three thousand millimeters squared. I'm going to write this down three thousand millimeters squared and then multiplied by modulus of elasticity e which we looked it up and equals to 200 gigapascals now i want to do one thing here we have 200 gigapascals and i'm going to bring this whole term to millimeters squared, and I'm going to leave kilonewtons as it is, and just change meters into millimeters. So let's do that. I'm going to come back here, and here is where I'm going to work transforming gigapascals from gigapascals into kilonewtons and millimeters. Okay. So one thing to know, we have giga. What does giga mean? Giga means 10 power 9. So we have giga for 10 power 9. We have 10 power 6, which is mega. And then we have 10 power 3, which is kilo. And these are the things you, you it's good if you memorize them. But it's it's good, but they're also given in the FE handbooks under the unit section. You are told here somewhere. Let's see. You have ten power nine giga. There you go. G. There's ten power twelve para. But anyway, that's you're rarely gonna encounter that. The most common ones are gonna be giga ten power nine, mega ten power six, and then ten power three kilo. Okay, so which means that if I come back here, giga, that means that I have 200 multiplied by 10 power 9, and then pascals, 1 pascal equals to newton over meter squared. And again, these are things that you don't have to memorize, but it's helpful to know sometimes, but it also gives given, it's given in the FE handbook. Somewhere here we have Newton and you should have there you go Pascal. One Pascal equals to Newton over meter squared. So this is what we're doing. Newton over meter squared. Now in our problem we need kilonewtons and millimeters squared. So we need kilonewtons and millimeters. Let's just remember that. We want to bring this gigapascals into kilonewtons and millimeters. Okay, so what happens here, what I, when I multiply with 10 power 9, this is going to bring this to newtons. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, I'm going to bring this actually to, it's going to be 10 power 6, which is going to leave this instead of newtons into kilonewtons. So 10 power 6, and this is going to be, excuse me, kilonewtons over meters squared. 
And now we have meters squared, but we need millimeters. So we're going to say one meter equals to 1,000 millimeters. And one meter squared, because we have squared here, equals to 1,000 millimeters squared. So now meter squared with meter squared go away. And we're going to have here at the bottom 1,000 squared equals to 10 power 6. So moving forward, what we're going to have, we're, ha we're going to have 200 and 10 power 6, 10 power 6 go away. So we're going to end up with 200 kilonewtons over millimeters squared. So 200 gigapascals equals to 200 kilonewtons over millimeters squared. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to this page and I'm going to write this over here 200 multiplied kilonewtons over millimeters squared. So we have kilonewtons, millimeters, and we have meters here at the top. So I'm going to also transform that and I'm going to multiply with 1000, or I can say one meter equals to 1000 millimeters and meter with meter go away. I think we took care of all the units now. So I'm going to do millimeter squared with millimeter squared go away, kilonewtons with kilonewtons go away. So we're going to be left with millimeters. And now let's just do the math. That's all we have left. We're going to have 3,441.9 divided by 600,000. And this should give you a value of 5.74 millimeters. So the deflection or displacement at that joint, the displacement at that joint is equal to 5.74 millimeters. And the correct answer is B. You see how a problem like that can bring into action the units. Units is something that you must work with and understand it because even if you would know how to solve this problem, if you have a problem with units, you might end up messing this up. So please work on your unit understanding or understanding the units. And another thing I'm noticing here in the problem, they gave us moment of inertia. And I feel like sometimes it's possible they might just give you something uh, to confuse you, to make you think that you might miss something. Why Why are they giving it to us, but I'm not applying it in, anywhere? That's one of those cases where they give it to you probably for that reason to confuse you. I hope this uh, problem made sense and you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and give it a like because this helps put this video in front of more people just like you. Continue working hard on solving these FE problems and I will see you next week.